We're back, people, and today we're picking up film on the Miami Dolphins offense versus the Seahawks. And man, was this a rough one. Probably the worst outing the Dolphins offense has had in the Mike McDaniel era. They could, they pretty much every drive started with like a positive play or two, and they would get in good field position, good adv advantageous opportunities, and they just couldn't finish. Uh, whether it was bad play calling, bad execution, or just Skylar Thompson having one of the worst performances you'll ever see from a quarterback like it was rough like he couldn't even function sometimes just pitching the ball like it was it was very difficult to see and there's lots of blame to go around and uh there will be lots of things thrown uh at different people you know blaming of and I, it's all fair blaming chris greer or mike mcdaniel or just some of the players everyone deserves the share of the blame right now it is still only week three so we'll, we'll see if the dolphins can potentially turn it around because Things in football can change very fast. It's a long season too. So uh, people could have a very different perspective, you know, just in a few weeks. Next week is like the big lit big test because the Titans have been awful. Uh, and the Dolphins have looked about as bad as you can. You look bad in that one and it's really like pretty much over. But it was hard to watch. Uh, I only have Skylar Thompson clips because only a certain amount of clips have come out at this point. I got like basically when Skylar got hurt is up to the clips that I have. So might have a Tim Boyle one later because... The Dolphins offense looked much better with Tim Boyle, uh, but still couldn't finish. To me at this point, the offense needs to be simplified. It needs like a pretty much revamp the concept. There's way too much going on pre-snap. The Dolphins offense can't function with a backup quarterback. It just needs to be changed. It needs to be, and Tyler Huntley needs to get the reins because I think he just gives you a much better chance of winning. But so many drives just ruined after a positive play. Like they kept getting in good position and then I don't know what they were trying to accomplish i really don't in certain uh, certain situations so we'll break down this film because there was a decent amount of things to like they they ran the ball well like up the middle especially when they were running like those power concepts up the middle or you know mid zone type things they had positive plays and so it was very difficult to see just like one play just pretty much killed the drive after that like first play of the game they come out here they come on in like a speed package too they have a chan lined up out why they uh have hill motioning across they have Tanner Connor in the backfield at fullback with Jalen Wright. And they go to their go-to seam rail slide RPO and actually get like a pretty good look. Uh, Skyler's reading this guy right here, this flat defender. He sees this guy squeeze Tanner Connor. Boom, he's going to take that space to A-Chan. A-Chan on, on the same page. And you just come out and you gain like, you know, 20 yards instantly to one of your best playmakers. A-Chan, who's probably been your best playmaker this season. Next play, you get a nice little toss going. I mean, Skyler looks uncomfortable here too because... Um, he's trying to do the fake dive toss thing. He just looks like he doesn't have the ball handling skills like Tua has. Tua has like, Tua is one of the best in the league when it comes to like the ball handling, when it comes to doing these pitches, these fakes. He really sells these things. Obviously it works here, but Skyler did, like looked uncomfortable doing that stuff. This was also, I mean, the rest were also awful. Like would that have changed the game? No. Would there have been certain scenarios where the Dolphins might have scored some points if the refs literally didn't destroy them probably like this one was clearly a horse collar also a decent chance it's just a first down straight up um but jalen wright because he steps out like right there and the ball is like pretty even with it but they gave him a second and one but after those first two plays you have some positive plays but then you come out on second and one and you try to run play action and basically you have they're showing some pressure up the middle to get some interior pressure O-line seems confused because they like pull this across. They slide here. I don't, I think Seattle came out here with this plan. Like, because sometimes when they do like this, these play action stuff, um, they slide this across. But the Seattle kept all their interior very close together. So someone kind of gets up, I guess. Julian Hill is blocking and then releasing out. And once he releases, like, Skyler's got to feel this. Skyler has no pocket awareness. Like, his pocket awareness was horrible in this game. First opportunity. Like, he has to get this out. Like, right here, when he sees him check and release like throw the ball to julian hill he waits way too long and then doesn't do it until he gets hit blasted like i mean i felt bad for skyler too because he was getting crushed but a lot of those situations were like kind of his fault and then the dolphins come out third and one what do they do they go back to their fullback dive hand it off to jeff wilson it gets nothing yes the fullback dive worked like the first three or four times they ran it and pretty much has not worked since i think they just got to keep it pretty simple in these situations uh not like this simple like fullback dive but like just do like those power, those counter concepts, or take a shot at this point. Like these teams are stacking the box. I get it's like we don't, they, they, there's no trust in the quarterback, but they do that. 
and then it gets to, now it's a fourth and one, fourth and two, and they kick a field goal, and it's missed, and that's kind of how they started out the game, uh, really, really hurting themselves, shooting themselves in the foot, uh, really, really tough to see. And then here's another, here's a positive play to start a drive, and what happens? They get a holding call. This one doesn't end up mattering too much, because there was a, uh, a personal foul on the next play on the defense, so they get their first down back, uh, but like they were running a lot of these power counter the gap scheme stuff the stuff where they were sh hitting b gaps a gaps they were running these things very successfully here like skyler like looks uncomfortable man like just under center he runs in, like he gets the snap here the o line's already moved skyler hasn't moved at all liam eichenberg just hits him in the face because skyler took so long to move or get the snap i don't know what that is i mean he stays on his feet at least but then you get the ball to h hand things are blocked up pretty well here you have Armstead down blocking Eichenberg and Ingold kicking some people out taking guys out here Julian Hill's in a good spot gets up to the second level but once he's right here the guy tries to work past him he just hooks him and gets the holding call the only pro like I've seen people being like Julian Hill should get cut I mean that's not gonna happen but he needs to play way better the only problem is at tight end like this is why the Dolphins I've kind of been always wanted them to get like a full around like type stud tight end it's hard to do but they need someone like with a full skill set that can block, catch. They need like someone that can be a potential star. Because the problem is, is Johnny Smith is definitely your best receiving tight end. But Julian Hill also gives you your most like highest blocking reps. And then Durham has just been really bad this season. Like they're all just like have their specific skill set. So it kind of makes the offense predictable. And then when they're struggling like this, like on this rep, Julian Hill actually has a good blocking rep uh, right there on the, the, the defensive back. And it's blocked up pretty well. Some more uh, stuff here with lead, power, following up on your, your left guard there. They block it up pretty well. A-Chan looked comfortable hitting these gaps with vision, burst. I wanted to see more Jalen Wright too because I feel like when Jalen Wright was in, he looked good uh, getting Moster back. I just feel like the offense needs to full revamp. Very heavy support of the running game, especially some of those interior runs. I think McDaniel, I think... When it came to run concepts in this game, McDaniel was actually very good for the most part. It wasn't as many of those tosses. They only ran that a couple times. So he kind of listened to me in that area. Like, I wanted less of that. I wanted less screens. He did that. So I think he made a nice adjustment there. Because his run, his concepts are very good. It's just the play calling situation-wise has not been good. Like, certain times, like, it just doesn't make any sense. But the run game design was really good in this game. It's just they didn't commit to it enough, especially when they got to this part of the field. They got to midfield. And everyone just forgot how to play football. Here, and then after that run, it gets to another short yarded situation. And what do they do? They come out and then they try to fake the fullback dive. Usually with the fake fullback dive, you pitch it to the left, the opposite side. Here they go fake fullback dive and then try to pitch it to the same side. It's just nowhere to go. They cannot capture the edge here. They actually probably, they had a decent chance of converting when they just gave the fullback dive because Ingold probably just hits this hole. Um, but it looks like the Seattle just, predicted this was coming because if you like that if you look at the other drive they were really tight into the interior um they just is why they need to they, they should be able to adjust the play at the line of scrimmage because look at seattle's numbers to this side right here man uh, absolutely crazy so just getting you know out coached there at that point and they lose yardage and this then that's when they get into this situation the it's like a third and five seattle showing a too high look Showing that they might bring some pressure too up up the interior, which two of them drop. They bring this guy. Uh, Seattle does go into like you know they bring a safety down. They go into like a three match type situation. This guy's buzzing. Um, so Skyler gets the snap initially. Pretty good snap. Pretty much, uh, maybe slightly low, but it's a catch where he he drops it initially. Armstead is the one who kind of gets beat here. Armstead just kind of opens up the gate. Armstead has a pretty poor rep here. But honestly, at this point, I don't know if it would have mattered, like, if the rep was poor or not. No one's really open, so, like, not blaming Skyler too much for that type of stuff. Like, the O-line gets beat. No one's open, like, the receiving concepts. He's getting pressure, but then Skyler just, like, shits his pants or something, like, loses the ball. Like, I don't know what's going on there, man. He loses the ball without getting touched, and then Armstead jumps on top of it. Like, but it looks like he was just so panicked. No decisiveness. Uh, that's why, you know getting into these situations where it's like an obvious passing situation that's where the offense just really really struggles um and then this drive they had another penalty that this was after the, the interception they had another penalty 
this is the third down play so like they had they ran like seam rail slide rpo to get back down to the four or the five yard line motion jalen right out basically he reads this two-man concept he gets a two-on-two -two. this is what you want like this side of the field it's a three guys versus four he gets a two-on-two -two over here with this guy kind of helping to the inside but both of their routes are outbreakers I don't know if he's expecting Waddle is one of the best receivers at this where he's going to break to the outside, but he takes an inside release. He's one of the few receivers that can actually do this because he's so explosive. Releases the inside. Instead of Skyler just sticking with it and then throwing the ball now, like this is where this is where having Tua really hurt, doesn't hurt you because if Tua is reading this, he's throwing this ball right now because that's what he's going to do. It's in his anticipation. Uh, he's going to be starting to release it. Skyler does doesn't like the offensive line gave you enough time to throw this ball like it wasn't perfect up front but now he doesn't take that opportunity he now escapes the pocket because he's getting pressured and then has to throw the ball away so just didn't give waddle that chance which i think if he threw the ball with anticipation those windows get tight down in the red zone i think it would have been completed another drive where they start off with a positive play this time not a run uh they get you know more guys in the box they get a single high look i kind of like this i think it's fine to do like, I, I want them to be a run-heavy team with the backup quarterbacks in. But I think it's fine, like, for certain drives, like after you ran the ball in the first down a lot, to come out with just, like, a quick-hitting passing play, play action behind the back. Boom. Uh, especially when they start going single high. You get Waddle over the middle, breaking on this. Puts these players in conflict here with Ezu Kaman down the flat. And then if this was covered up, like, they squeezed Waddle more, you could throw this to the flat, like, as a check-down option. Uh, potentially, you know, pick up a few yards there. So it kind of becomes like a running play. I think some more simple things like this, like it's a simple, simple read for Skyler, like he, and obviously like some of the simple reads didn't work out either, but it was just so many drives where they just ruined their opportunities here after they, the first down was one of those plays where like, it looked like it was a penalty before the snap, but for some reason, uh, it, the players like stopped playing because it, it felt like the refs like blew the whistle or something like it's, I can't tell from the film cause there's no sound, uh, but the refs were really messing up. And then they go out here. It's like second 11. They get a good screen look. And then Skyler floats this for like. Skyler floated this. Like you, get, you want to float it over the defender. But he floated like it. Like this guy had like an 80 inch vert. And he was 7 feet tall. And the ball just floats, floats, floats. And if the ball gets in his hands. Like it could potentially be a big play. This guy gets past the blockers. um, But if the ball's not super floated. Who knows what happens on this play. Because that could change everyone's path. Uh, just based on, because John would have had the ball much, much quicker. Uh, so, just unfortunate things that really ruined drives. Then they come out, get downhill. Jalen Wright run, another quality play, running up the middle. Love this look. Motion this across. Uh, Wright then is able to change direction. It gives almost like this, you know, this counter action with that motion. Like, as I was saying, McDaniel has like a beautiful run game design. That's it's why people around the league like copy a lot of his stuff. Um, and then you down block. Great job here on the left side of the line by Jones and Teron Armstead. Creating some space there. Durham kicks out. Angled meets this guy in the hole. It's just really good work across the board from pretty much everyone. I want to give a shout out. I feel like Brewer has been the most consistent offensive lineman for the Dolphins. Like even Armstead has had his struggles. And honestly, at this point, I may, I may be okay if Patrick Paul even played. I think Paul played one snap in this game, which I'll, I, I might show on late, uh, at a later point once that clip actually comes out. But Jalen Wright gets downhill, pick up solid yards. They picked up, like, you know, a good chunk. And then the next play, it's A-Chan. It's another solid start to the drive, running the ball downhill. This was more like a mid-zone type play, but with, like, an insert. I uh, really like this because they motion this across with Angled. It's like a mid-zone with how they block it. And then Angled gets this. To like now cut off the defensive end. It's such a weird design. Look how they set this up. Like with how Jackson releases the outside of 94. And it just like throws him off balance. And then now Engel gets a perfect position on him with the motion. Then Jackson gets out to the linebacker. And then you have the tight end inserting here off the back of the right guard. And he's able to meet up on the safety. And he pancakes there. It's just Wow, this play design is absolutely beautiful. And then how A-Chan executed off of it. Like, look at his feet and how he worked off Smythe there. Absolutely beautiful. And you have a great start to a drive. Beautiful first two plays. Great running downhill by Jalen Wright. And Devon A-Chan is what you should be doing. And then you come out and try to run play action. If this is your look pre-snap, they need to be able to be able to check out of this stuff. And the, the 
problem with this play, it's not even necessarily that you're trying to pass. Like, I understand after two su successful runs, maybe you want to try a pass because Seattle might try to respond to a thing. But they clearly come out and don't change up their looks too much. Like, it's still, like, a relatively light box you can run against it. But they motion the running back out. So there's no threat of a run. Like, Ingold's the one in the backfield. Seattle's not threatened by anything. There's no play-action element to it. And then they drop back. And I don't really... Something happens here, I think... I think that's Waddle. Waddle gets thrown off his path. They kind of their routes are way too close together. Like, but this ball could potentially be completed to H and if, if he tries to, you know, layer this over the top and, you know, it probably is open. But they run their routes way too close to each other. So poor execution by the receivers. They have Ingold blocking here and then a right guard pulling across. This guy takes a super wide arc here. So Skyler takes a huge drop, but Skyler's got to step up. Like, th this needs to be blocked better, but Skyler's got to have some pocket awareness. The ball either has to be released, or he has to step up and flow in this pocket. Like, there's space to work to, but he just doesn't feel it at all. And when you have that with just, like, poor offensive line play, that's it's a recipe for disaster, and it just kills drives. The drive's over, you know, after, the, like, that. Then you have plays like this, like, look at Kendall Lamb. Kendall Lamb clearly false starts, right? Like, he gets a little bit too early off the ball. Instead of calling false start, um, but look at everyone else. They stop on the play. Like the defense, the, the whole secondary stops, the receivers stop um, because felt like it was a false start or something. Um, and then up front, Skyler looks like he doesn't know what's going on, like the play's going to be over. Everyone just gave up on the play. I don't know if they blew the whistle or not, but something was going on with the rest because this happened multiple times throughout this game. I don't know. I mean, I don't know. It was ridiculous, but. Whatever, didn't, I mean, that wouldn't have changed anything. It's not like the Dolphins were going to convert a, a, a third and 11 anyways. <laughs> it was just annoying to see. Then they come out with like a minute left, no timeouts. Another good first play. Like, for some reason, they could only execute the first two plays of drives. Um, this is kind of what you want to see. Being able to throw the ball in the windows like this. Seahawks come out and cover three. They come out with their speed package because you look at this. They have Jalen Wright, Devon uh, Chan running backs at the bottom. Waddle, Tyreek, and Johnny Smith. I kind of like these packages. Uh, and I think it can work well in the receiving and running game. Um, honestly, Jalen Wright looks pretty explosive running this route down here. Uh, but yeah, you get this opened up. Tyreek behind Waddle in that space, and it works out. But then the drive just falters. I don't really know what happened here. This like ending sequence, like I didn't show the other plays, but like I don't know why they're not throwing a Hail Mary here. They're trying to throw like quick out to Waddle, then Waddle works out of bounds. There's nowhere for Skyler to go with this. Skyler needs to th show some awareness, though. Like, he gets absolutely blasted. Like, he's got to know someone's going to come to him. But, like, what is the design? What are the receivers doing? What is Skyler doing? What is anyone doing in these situations? How is there no one in the end zone for a chance for Hail Mary here? I get maybe you're trying to draw a penalty or something, or you're trying to potentially get out of bounds, but it just, I don't know. This was kind of mind-blowing, honestly. I don't really know what. <laughs> they were trying to accomplish at that point. Then the last play we're going to look at, this was technically Skyler's, because this was the actually the last play that they had available for the All-22 so far. Um, this was the play where Skyler got initially hurt, so he played one more drive after this and got hit, um, but this was basically it for Skyler. It, it's a it's a third and short situation. I don't mind them trying to come out and pass the ball, because it's, it's like, a, like a third and two, like a long... Uh, a long third and one type situation so it's not super easy convert for a run and the runs really hadn't worked they tried to come out play action throw to the flat uh, which potentially if he waits this, if he throws the ball to HN he gets it but he's getting hit as it's going to happen uh, he just didn't have time because this linebacker delay blitzes and everyone's getting blocked like but they kind of just mess this up one on one and then the linebacker comes in free and just crushes Skylar Thompson you can see that this opens up here. Like they're all blocking people here. The only one who's not is Robert Jones. So I guess they could have all bumped down one, but that's always hard to predict that th this linebacker is going to come and he doesn't like come as late. And this ball's got to be out as quick as possible. I uh, got to take a chance throwing it to someone, but Skyler's put in a tough spot and it basically ended right here. And then Tim Boyle, I'll try if there is if those other clips do come out today early, I will try to get the rest of the offensive breakdown. I might just do like a how the offense looked with Tim Boyle in, because it did look better. They were actually able to move the ball, and I, I want to point out some of the concepts they were doing, because I do think it looked, at least when I was watching it live, it looked like 
some of the things became a little more simplified uh, in the passing game, which I think is important for the Dolphins to have some success. Now, obviously, it's still very early in the season. Uh, definitely reasons to be uh, pessimistic, though, and it's very understandable for people to be angry and want some answers. But things can change very quickly. Will they? I don't know. Dolphins have a ton of talent. A lot of the things they are doing wrong are fixable, and I think there's but things better that the players can do that I know we've seen better out of certain individuals. Some injuries happened in this game, which sucked, but there is like bright side. Like they were running the ball on those gap scheme stuff pretty well. It's just like situations after that that really hurt them, whether it was like poor player execution or on McDaniel, because McDaniel does need to be better, but we'll see how this whole season plays out. Um, You know, I'm a big NFL draft guy, so (laughs) we might have to get into NFL draft season pretty soon if this continues, but uh, hopefully the team can give some hope. So then like the next three games are all very winnable. Like it's uh, it's no, we just played Seattle. It's Tennessee, New England, and Indianapolis. And those teams all look pretty rough as well. Like, they are also some of the worst teams in the league. If the Dolphins can play at least some winning football, like maybe go 2-1 and one against some bad teams, I think that could at least help with some momentum and some confidence for uh, some execution so the players can, you know, feel some things. Um, and then Tua would come back, and clearly you would look much better with Tua. But we'll see how it all ends up playing out. If you guys enjoyed the video, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to the Robbie.